historical piece, we revisit the world of this old bird, the B-47 Stratajet. I was in the Air Force when these came online, and I remember how much we thought of the airplane. Join us as we turn back the pages of time. time, it was the queen of the skies. And although it never fired a shot in anger, the B-47 Stratojet occupies a place as one of the pivotal jet bombers in aviation history. Here is the story of the jet and the men who flew it. That story began for many men on the plains of Kansas. Here, near Wichita, is McConnell Air Force Base, known as one of the toughest schools in the Air Training Command. The men who came here learned to fly one of the hottest airplanes of its time, the Boeing B-47. Gentlemen, on behalf of the 3520th Combat Crew Training Wing, we welcome you to McConnell Air Force Base. Now, you're here for an intensive training period qualify you as crew members in the B-47 airplane. Now, to acquaint you with some of the history of the Stratajet, we take you back to 1943, to the dark days of World War II. At that time, the B-17 was the mainstay of the Army Air Corps. The super fortress, the B-29, was just starting in production. At the request of the Air Force, the Boeing company began studies on the next generation of big bombers. This would be a bomber with something new at the time, the jet engine. These studies, thousands of research hours and exhaustive wind tunnel tests led to a six jet swept wing airplane. On December 17, 1947, exactly 44 years from the day the Wright brothers flew at Kitty Hawk, the XB-47 took to the skies. That flight, sparked a revolution. Jet-powered airplanes were definitely here to stay. By early 1948, the Air Force had decided it wanted stratojets, lots of them. That decision led to reopening of the government B-29 plant in Wichita, Kansas. Two years later, in March of 1950, the dream came to life as the standard production models began to roll off the line. Within four years, 100 B-47s had been built. The first production model was not the end. A continuous program of development kept the Stratojet in front. From the current model was developed the RB-47, a reconnaissance model. The radical new design was powered by six 6,000-pound 6, thrust J-46 GE-25 engines which are grossly underpowered by today's standards. But still, it gave the Stratojet a maximum performance of 606 miles per hour at 16,000 feet. Still, the B-47 often needed help getting airborne under conditions of extreme weight. And that's where Jato bottle thrust provided an additional 33,000 pounds of thrust. So, gentlemen, that's the airplane. Now, you'll learn that she flies by teamwork. A combat crew of three, aircraft commander, pilot, and observer. Now, you pilots may just as well regard the observer as the blue chip passenger. When you're coming in over the target, it's his baby. When your observer calls for a sudden station, all this vast program, all this effort, is no better than the observer's skill in those few seconds over the target. Now your instructors here at McConnell are prepared to qualify you as B-47 combat crew teams. Now, it's up to you. And for that day and age, it was a tall order. The training to fly a B-47 was as complex as any in the history of the Air Force. 
a seemingly endless mass of systems and procedures were involved. And with only a crew of three, teamwork was vital. It was needed to understand the 27 miles of electrical wiring, the thousand electronics tubes, hydraulics, compressors, valves, and gauges without end. The observer was probably the most important crew member in terms of putting bombs on the target. He had to learn about radar and the key this small handle which actually controlled the bomber while it was on its final bomb run. Then the electronics took over, helping to compute all the variables for an accurate bomb run, primitive by today's standards of laser and optical guided bombs. But for the time, it was the best thing going. After weeks of intensive effort, it was time for the crew to solo the airplane. than not, the outcome was predictably routine. After all, the Air Force usually sent its best to train in what was the hottest bomber in the world. McConnell turned them out en masse for assignments all over the world. B-47s were deployed from Europe to the Far East and Africa. To achieve and maintain a high degree of readiness, then as now, simulated missions were flown under rigorous conditions. And our now operational crew is quickly thrown into the fray. Control Tower, this is Air Force 1956. Ready for takeoff, over. Air Force 1956. Cleared for takeoff. Roger, coming up on power. Although it was heavier than any World War II bomber, including the B-29, the B-47 was classified as a medium bomber. In the sky, it was as sleek and capable as anything in the air. Gear up. Gear coming up. The B-47 could climb at 4,600 feet per minute and had a range of over 4,000 miles. But like any jet, it was very thirsty and refueling was a common practice. Tom. Our scheduled refueling time is 2400. Uh, it's about six minutes to go. Where's that tanker airplane? Uh, hold your present heading. I have the tanker on radar. You should have him in sight now. Roger. I have the tanker in sight. Nice going, Tom. We're going in right on the button. Sam, get set for refueling contact. Roger, Cliff. Refueling checklist complete. Slipway door open. Get your credit card ready. She's all yours. Okay, Sam. Watch our fuel distribution. I'm ready to contact. At the time, for security reasons, aerial refueling contacts and the Strategic Air Command were handled in radio silence between tanker and bomber. This delicate maneuver became so routine in the Air Force that even at the time, a refueling was taking place every three and a half minutes around the clock somewhere in the world. We just about got our load. Okay, pressure disconnect. Refueled and ready to fly through the long night to the target, a sleeping city seven miles below. At dawn, exactly on schedule, bombs away. Steady on zero four five. 
We're on autopilot. Roger. I have the target on radar. Center the PDI and give me second station. The PDI is centered. You have second station. Roger. I have it. Time to go. 180 seconds. This was the payoff. Three men, a machine, and the skills of thousands of people funneled into a few critical seconds. You have 30 seconds before bomb release. seconds. Ten. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. As it turned out, the B-47 never did drop bombs in anger. But many a contrail curved through the world skies as a symbol of the readiness of the Strategic Air Command. And the men who flew the B-47 will always remember that it opened the door for jet bombers in the U.S. Air Force. That role will never be forgotten. B-47s left these days, but this one at the Museum of Flight in Seattle is one of the finer examples still in existence. Now, we shift gears back to the present.